brothers, we're back. And our topic is the life in the Word. We're going to understand something that has not been perceived in the history of the Church. The Church, the Gospel, has been coming along for 2,000 years. And what's been left aside is an understanding of the topics that are related to the moment we are living now. The Church in our days will leave a message to the world because the judgment that will go on the world, it will be just. God will not judge something according that He doesn't give. On the other hand, we have a responsibility with Israel. And what's happening now? We have ten churches in Israel. They're small, the size doesn't matter, but they are there to testify. The church will leave. The servants who are there and accept Jesus will go with the church. But they must leave a legacy to the world. There will be a wor world and it will be easier because those that stay will say, we stayed, and they'll have to explain why they remained. The, the bad people left on a rocket ship, and that's what they're going to say. The believers who will remain, they will have to say the truth. The Lord left, they raptured the church, and we were left behind. It's in the Song of Solomon. So the world will be more aware because one group will be left behind to say that they will be judged with the world. That's not my problem. It belongs to the economy of God. So we have a responsibility to leave everything ready. It's 2,000 years. So brothers, answer me. If you've ever heard of any preaching on TV or radio or anything written about this topic of Jesus as the Word, I'd like to know and ask those who know about it to come here forward and here to explain it, to help me. The world doesn't know, doesn't have any information. How will the church be raptured? A bride that doesn't know anything. Isn't that true? He wants to reveal himself. This is the moment. After this moment, it's gone. Nothing else is left to say. The Holy Spirit will be removed and the church must be strengthened and each one of us. The topic, we've selected a few topics from the last seminar and this most recent one and we have about 20 more topics to talk about. For example, wisdom. Nobody can explain wisdom. We are here before the cha challenges that the world imposes to make opposition to the project of salvation within the gospel. This is something that's very strange. It's a topic for another lesson. We're going to say something about it. But brothers, you will understand that the life in the Word, what are we saying? What's the first thing? The Word is the Bible. It's related to Jesus. Is there another word? Yes, there is. The word logos in the New Testament and the Gospel of John. There's another translation that says, in the beginning there was logos. And then you're going to ask logos. The philo philosophers talked about logos. But the logos of the philosophers is not the logos of the Bible. The logos of the philosophers is related to time. It's here. It's the beginning. It's history. It relates to salvation. It's for this life here. They are the result of a work, an effort, a mental effort of a person. The Logos 
that we are talking about has another meaning. Let's be practical then, because our time is short. Let's start here with the first verse. I'd like the brothers to follow us reading with me. The life in the word. The first verse of John is 1-1. One, one. Let's read together. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You see, brothers, through this word, and this word is Jesus, through the word God transmits his word, when God said, let there be light, there was an action through the Word. The Word of God is an action. Jesus in action. Then the brothers will read through Him, Jesus. To Him, Jesus. Everything was done. And everything exists through the power of this Word. It's the power of God, which is Jesus. You see, brothers, everybody knows that, but there's not an interaction of this kind. What does it mean? What's it for? And we're going to see that God transmits His Word. God transmits His wisdom. Therefore, the Word of God is His wisdom, and His wisdom is the Word. And who is the Word? The Word is Jesus. So Jesus is the wisdom of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. Therefore, Logos, we will see, there's a Logos which can be philosophical and has nothing to do with God. Nothing. It's just the beginning of everything. Everything, how everything began and how the world was created, Darwin explains this. The philosophers explain this. Philosophers talked a lot about it. Aristotle, these are our confabulations. They don't always have conditions to say that the world was created by God. They always are digressing, saying there was a being, a supreme being. They don't get to the point of saying that it was God because they don't have an experience with the revelation. Therefore, Jesus, religion says, he is nice. Jesus of Christmas, he died, he resurrected. Let's celebrate that. There's no problem about that. But this is not the Jesus that we know. Look here, because this Jesus we know is the one who reveals himself, the wisdom of God, the word of God. He sustains everything by the power of his word and his wisdom, by his word. So we are here placing the word. In the beginning was the word. This word is Jesus. It was in the past. He is not the present in the beginning. He was. This is called pre-existence. Before everything was created, Jesus already existed. Do you understand? He is before everything. Jesus existed before the world was created. And that's why He's the Word itself, to create everything with the Word. Let there be light, and there was light. We're not talking about a, a grammatical category, but an expression of the wisdom of God it's a word that doesn't return without having its effect. God speaks, and the effect happens by the word of God. Let's look at another verse. There are two main manifestations of the word as the living word. You've had lessons about Bible, the living word. The Bible, the living word. What is the living word? The living word, it is that what it brings to maintain our relationship we have with God. It's a living God, our relationship with a God, a living God by a living word. We then have to have the word as a living word in the work of creation. 
God said, let there be light, and there was light, and light was created. And the word in the work of redemption, in this case, it's related to another universe. This here is one universe. The universe of the creative work is in which dimension? The fourth or the fifth? The fourth dimension. We're talking about the universe of the creative work. So look here. It's all here. So this work of creation, so the living word of Jesus is in this work of creation that is, contains, he transforms, he takes the matter to create everything in the creative work. So the world and all of us are here in the creative work and he sustains everything by the power of his word. The word says, upholding all things by the word of his power. So here it's the work, the creative work. God uses Jesus and Jesus the wisdom of God, the word, the secret. These are secrets that he has for his believers. So God transmits his wisdom to your life, to the life of the believer. And he uses Jesus and asks, do you accept Jesus? And then the Holy Spirit, he comes and confirms this word of wisdom in your life. This is what the world does not have. This is the difference. We need to understand that. We have to understand that the beginning and end has an end. Everything that has life dies here. Everything that has life, what doesn't have life, is already dead. But everything that has life dies here. Do you hear what I'm saying? Everything that has life dies here. You can, be a, you can be a vegetable, a man, an animal, it dies here. But here, there is another life. It's a redemptive work. This one remains. Why? Because the one that gave the beginning to everything, he is beyond everything. He's not a creation. He's not a creature. creature. If he was created, he would die. But what happened with him? He died to this life. He died. He came to the world, died for this one, and he resurrected for this one. Do you understand? So the resurrection of Jesus is what matters. In his resurrection, his wisdom is given by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was given to you, my brother. There is an evangelical world that does not give any value to this. They're going after what everyone knows. And some people like it, but that's not what the Lord wants for our life. It's not what that kind of thing we were called for. And much more now, these last moments, we are living the last moments. Let's continue on. The Word is what we talked about. The beginning, it narrates the story of creation. That's what we said. So it's the Word that God uses to address the world. Now, what does God do? He uses the Word to address the world. He doesn't say, I'm God and I'm talking. He didn't do that. He uses Jesus. Now, the word Logos, there's no difficulty here for the brothers to understand it. There are words that are placed here and they understand and say they speak nonsense or foolishness and people live on expressions which are used by philosophy to bring confusion. What is Logos? Let's go back here. The text says Greek wisdom because Greeks were the ones who started this kind of understanding. They used words and expressions they saw in the in Logos, an impersonal element, an element of truth that was distant from the Bible. Our Logos, though, is different. This Logos here, no one, it doesn't matter how important it is, the Logos of God, that's the wisdom of God, 
What does it say? This wisdom, which none of the rulers, even important people of this age knew, for they known. The world didn't know. They don't know this Logos of God, this wisdom of God, which is the revelation in your life, the meeting you had. It's a simple man who's in the field, who's in the streets, with difficulty to survive, a needy person. But it's the one that the Lord, it wasn't the wise or n known, it was to the babes that Jesus revealed himself. So let's read here, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Why did they crucify Jesus? Because they never knew him. They didn't get to know the wisdom of God, the revelation of God. They did not receive the Holy Spirit. They did not have any experience of salvation, of an eternal life that entered into their lives through the church, through the Holy Spirit. So the revelation of the Bible is different. Do you see, brothers, that this word does not live on philosophy? This wisdom is not related to philosophy because it's not of the Bible and philosophy of Socrates, Plato, Pythagoras. This is not in the Bible. So look here. Where is the wisdom of God? It's in the Word and the living word, in the word that has life. So as we look here, the biblical revelation turns logos into an element to time and why? Because Jesus enters into the world and this world is temporary. He enters the history of man as if it was an explosive element. This action of the Holy Spirit in the project of salvation, the Pentecost, you can see all the operations of the Holy Spirit and specifically related to Pentecost, it was this, as if an explosive element. It reads, the potential energy and the power of life and the same fountain which creates and reveals so God creates and reveals what is around. This is important. What the world doesn't want is the revelation. God creates, but the world doesn't want revelations. They want themselves to understand a project that comes from eternity. One thing is this world that's here. This world is matter. Another thing is another universe, the world of eternity, the world of God. He commands not only this world, He commands all the other worlds. Because the Word of God says, by His Word, the worlds. He doesn't say the world, it was the worlds were created. Whoever read this article this week about galaxies and new planets and nebulosas, to have an idea, oh, a star, Andromedia, it fits a hundred Earths inside the star. The worlds, God has to explain to man how he created the worlds. He would ask, do you agree? I don't know. Man doesn't give any value to this. He doesn't give any importance to revelation. God wants to reveal because he has a project for man. It's his love. It's not love for a religion. It's the love of God. And this is what the Romans says in Romans. For of him and through him and to him and for him and through him, who Jesus. So look here. All the concern of God is to show what was in eternity and he sent here it was Jesus 
All the project of God was Jesus, his sacrifice, the suffering, the humiliation, and all that man isn't interested in because man is very intelligent, he's smart, he can reach man using the ways he wants. He builds a rocket ship, then he'll go to meet God. Brothers, this is in man's ideas. There's no reason in the world that it's able to reach the project of the one who created everything. Who created everything here knows the destiny of this. He knows what he's going to do with the world. And our great worry as servants is one, to be in the project of God. We can't leave this project. No, I think that the law of physics, I can get there myself. The physicists are struggling. It's nothing much. They want to find out the matter which God created the world. They have found the particle such and such. Let them find out. Let's check if that's it. There's no problem. If they can discover it, it would be even good. So the word is the primary way of the intervention of God in the world. By His Word, God created heaven and earth. Now, the understanding of this creation is ours, and it's by faith. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Hebrews 11.3. It's the action of the Word in the beginning of all things. Now, as a substance, one thing, He frames the world it's matter. It will end. You are matter. I am matter. All of us. Everything that is alive, that dies, is part of this matter. Some, something interesting that you can see in the creation, and this is extraordinary. This is what we see in life, in the life of this universe. If you get a metal ball made of gold, and you put a, a flame, a fire on it, a fire, and it will melt. When the energy is removed, it will go practically to the same shape it had before. Do you know why? Because it has atoms. And inside, this matter is made of atoms and they obey another law in physics of molecular attraction. When the energy was removed, the heat was removed from the gold, it goes back to the original state with the same kind of structure. It's called spatial structure. This spatial structure is made of atoms. That's why it's called atomic spatial structure. Each metal obeys a special type of structure. Cubic, hexagon, or thrombic. There are many formats where you can find atoms around. The atoms. So when matter goes back to its form, you can see how interesting the energy is here. It's brute energy, but it's energy. Nothing will pass without the Lord's command. There is a world here that has atomic energy and speed. So the, the speed, to have an idea of one atom, what happens to an atom there's, the, there's the, the proton, which is an element around the atom. It moves billions of turns around the nucleus of the atom, and that happens in, in milliseconds. There's no sp other speed like that. When you talk about the speed of light, it can't compare. The speed contained in matter inside the atom, which can't be seen by anyone, it is an element which provides substance 
and safety to all other matter. This energy, called atomic energy, is the one that destroys the world. Now how is it going to happen to have the world destroyed? It's another subject. It's something scientific. The essential way of God is He created the heavens by His Word, and by faith we understand that it is substance. God manifests Himself in the creative work, not as a matter, but as substance. Let's see when he says, I am the water of life, I am the bread. Who eats this bread and drinks this water? What is he talking about? He's talking about this water here? No, he's talking about an element, a substance that only God has. That's what religion didn't understand when he spoke about the bread and water. It's material to be eaten here, they thought. So our time is ending. We have much more to say, but I'd like to leave this very clear. Let's go more here. So the Word of God together. So the Word of God enters into history as an explosive force because it's the potential of energy and life force. And it is the interruption of creating the world that would never go back to God without the intended effects. This power is available to the world and it will do everything it has to do. Nothing will return to God without the expected results. What the modern physics, classical physics and other kinds of physics like quantic, they want to find out something new and they're not able. God operates and speaks operating. This is something that everyone has to know. So God operates by speaking and speaks by operating. So in the beginning, in the beginning there was everything, there was the Word. It's very important for the believer, not the Word itself, not just the letter, not the, just the letter. And what we're talking about, the Bible, my brother, you have to have revelation. The Bible without revelation is just history. It's just a letter. It's something that life has passed away. When you go to read the Bible, it's just letter or a, the word or a gesture that's disconnected from the author. If you read the word, you need to understand and know the word is connected to eternity. It can't be disconnected from its author. But people want to read and take a class, a Bible course, and they forget about this. So look here. The word itself is not just a letter or gesture disconnected from the author. That's not what the word is but it's the living God that wants to communicate to man. You read it, you read the Word, the Word gets in your life, and teaches you a project that God has. It's not something that you read, you liked, and you memorized. No, there's a sequence. What's missing in the Gospel? Let's see. So, s such a Word, which is Jesus, reveals Himself to the believer through the teachings and mysteries enlightened by the Holy Spirit. This word has to be enlightened by the Holy Spirit. When it's my reasoning, I don't need the enlightening of the Holy Spirit. I can simply understand and conclude to declare something in the biblical text. It's great. I can tell a story and say that something it goes well with something else. What's matter is this the Holy Spirit is doing here and now, showing. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So together, the Holy Spirit in its ma his manifestation does not create anything. There's no nothing new when the Holy Spirit works. He is content in enlightening the Word, teaching, bringing to remembrance, facilitating 
the understanding, proclama proclaiming, and the understanding of the one who reveals the mysteries, opening a way inside man. This is what's important. If the Holy Spirit doesn't open this way, this way that He opens, who is the way? Jesus. This way is opened by the Holy Spirit. This is the same as faith. He comes from above into man's heart. The Holy Spirit opens a way. And then this is opened in this faith. And this faith that came from above goes back. This is another faith that men talk about is different. But there's an opening in man's heart that is designated to give life. As Paul says, the life which I now live in the flesh, I do not live in the, f I live by faith. The faith here is the one who reveals the mysteries. Because when I accept Jesus and the way to Damascus, I had religion, but now I have the mystery. This is what we have. So let's finish here reading John 7:38 out of his, his heart will flow rivers of living water. All set. Do you see, brothers? We are giving some outlines. So let's stop here.